Clarity on Fire, a podcast for people who know what they don't want out of their life and career, but aren't sure what they'd rather be doing. In a world where it's easy to exist, but hard to feel alive, we, Kristen and Rachel, two certified life and career coaches, are here to help you cut through the information overload, get unstuck, and focus not just on how you can have a career you're passionate about, but how to create a whole life that feels fulfilling. So join us here, where we serve up inspiration and down-to-earth wisdom in a way that only two best friends can. We want you to experience the relief of knowing that, yes, you're allowed to want more out of your life and career. And no, you don't have to wander through the dark anymore. Our job is to light the fire that shows you the way. Let's go. This is the first new vlog we have published in how long? Months and months. Months and months. Months and months. Well, so this is a story about my one of my former clients, Haley, who is not the type to do a podcast interview. She just has like, she admits, I have mega stage fright. I just can't be a normal person interview. That's not my thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm not, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But she said, I'd love it if you wrote a blog about this though. And then I could read it and enjoy my own story and yeah, someone you, you else's can, writing. You can tell her story on her behalf. So I said, I, well, I would love to. I was so eager to tell the story because I think it's so, it's funny and it's also poignant. And the kind of teaser is that she, within a couple of months, found out she was pregnant with her second kid and decided that's my sign. I'm going to quit my job. I've been wanting to quit my corporate job for a long time. And then her great aunt passed away like a month later and left her house. And so mm-hmm. then what do you do when your whole identity just got upended in like two months? And you would think, wow, like she got all these things and it wasn't really a tragedy. Her aunt was old and it wasn't like surprise or anything like that. Right. She didn't know she was getting the house, though. That part of it had been a bit of a surprise <laughs> and then decided to renovate it. And then kind of the spiral that she ended up in questioning her identity and who am I when I'm not working? Mm-hmm. And then kind of the sort of parallels we explored between renovating this really outdated 70s house and renovating her beliefs. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's a fun story and I wanted to write about it. So I've worked with a lot of people who go through that version of an identity crisis, have over identified with their work. Yeah, I mean, that's and kind now of have to a huge part of what we do. Who am I? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's Aside the work that, that we do in coaching. I felt like, you know, as she kind of says in this story that it was like I got this really cool opportunity to do physical work like physical sort of peeling back layers while I was doing inner peeling back layers and doing them at the same time really helped me see the parallels between those two Mm -hmm. things and almost helped cement the changes within me more yeah like than if I hadn't been doing it (laughs) yeah I mean right that's what I think is very cool about this and is a good visual for all of you guys to sort of think about too in your own life so I hope you will enjoy Haley's story, and we will be back at the end. The shag carpet of my soul. One of my clients, Haley, had a doozy of a 2019. In April, she found out she was unexpectedly pregnant with her second child. It felt like a joyful permission slip. She'd been feeling the urge to quit her corporate job since her first daughter was born two years before, but hadn't been able to justify that decision to herself. By early May, she'd given her two weeks notice, and by Memorial Day, she was a full-time stay-at-home mom. And then, in late June, Haley's beloved great-aunt Mimi passed away and left Haley her house. If you need proof that things can change quickly, let Haley be your example. Haley and her husband decided to keep the house, renovate it, and move in after the new baby was born. She told me, Aunt Mimi had been on the decline for a while. The last time I saw her before she died, I got to tell her that I was pregnant. She was so happy for us. I sort of wonder if that gave her some peace and maybe allowed her to let go. I think she would have loved us making her house our new home. But as divine as the timing was, that didn't stop Haley from having a near breakdown over going through so many transitions at once. It was at that point that she reached out for some coaching. She was struggling to process her new life and also feeling guilty about the fact that she was struggling to process it all. Classic, right? Because after all, women who inherit houses and are blessed with babies and get to quit their jobs don't have problems, right? Where's HGTV when you need them? 
lest you think Haley inherited a modern mansion, I'll let her correct you. She told me, my great aunt Mimi never married and she never had kids. She was a real free-spirited hippie type. She never made a ton of money, but she worked a lot and always managed to get by. But home improvements weren't exactly top of her priority list. Her house was frozen in the 70s. It was like a less nice version of the Brady Bunch house. My mom was Mimi's only niece, and I'm my mom's only child, so I was kind of Mimi's de facto grandkid. And I spent a lot of time at that house. I loved it even though it was quirky and weird, but that does not mean I wanted to keep the nasty floral wallpaper and shag, yes, shag, carpets. We've all watched enough Fixer Upper to get excited about the idea of a massive home renovation, but the reality for Haley was pretty different. For a hot second after she found out she'd be inheriting the house, Haley thought she'd just make renovation her new full-time job. But because of her pregnancy, her doctor advised against manual labor, so they ended up hiring a contractor to take on the bulk of the work. All of a sudden, Haley found herself with a lot more time on her hands than she expected, which was when her downward spiral really got going. Cue the breakdown. When we first met, she shared that, I've been building a career for 15 years. Was I really supposed to have walked away from all of that hard work? What will people think of me for just quitting my job and being a stay-at-home mom? Not to mention inheriting a house. It makes me look like I don't have a strong work ethic. I'm afraid people are going to assume I took the easy way out or that I'm an underachiever. All the women in my family worked so hard for me to be able to have a good life and career. Is this really how I repay them? And also, who am I to even complain about this? It sounds awful. I asked Haley to tell me more about the women in her family. She told me that they were a fiercely independent, prideful bunch. Her great aunt Mimi helped raise Haley's mom and uncle when they were little after Haley's grandfather left the family and Haley's grandmother, Marlene, had to manage life as a single mom with two small kids. I could instantly picture Mimi and Marlene, two young sisters in the early 1960s, coming together to support themselves and two little kids in a time where being independent women wasn't common nor very acceptable. In turn, Haley's mom had Haley when she was only 21, and her parents divorced shortly after she was born. So the messages she inherited from the women in her family couldn't have been clearer. Work your ass off. There's no room for relaxation. You do what you have to do to survive and care for your family, and definitely never, ever trust a man to take care of you. So of course, Haley inherited those messages. And for good reason. They served the women who came before her well. But is it any wonder that 60 years later, Haley was having a hard time not having a career? Those familial beliefs run deep. Going counter to them can feel like breaking the law. The shag carpet of my soul. When I heard about the women in Haley's family, I asked a weird question. So when you inherited the house from Mimi, did you ever consider keeping the shag carpet? She almost choked on her answer. Um, definitely not. I said, I figured, but what's funny is that you didn't think for a second that you should keep the house as is. But you inherited more than just a house from your family. You got all of these beliefs and inner programming from them too. The stories about what it means to be a productive, independent woman are an inheritance. And you're not questioning it the same way you are the house stuck in the 70s, even though the beliefs are stuck back in the 70s or earlier too. A few weeks later, she emailed me and said, I couldn't stop thinking about what you said. You're right. I need to question all of these beliefs that I think make me who I am, the same way I'm questioning every part of this house renovation. So I present to you a list. I've dubbed it the shag carpet of my soul. On the list was a catalog of old, worn out beliefs that she nicknamed according to something in the house that she was getting renovated. I have to have a career to be taken seriously was the faux wood paneling. I can't trust anyone to take care of me became the lime green toilet. Rest and relaxation are lazy was the groovy floral wallpaper. Sacrifice is what it means to be a woman was the shag carpet. As the old beliefs would pop up, she'd refer to them by their nickname. The lime green toilet started acting up again and the groovy floral wallpaper was screaming at me today. Over time, she couldn't help but take them less seriously and she started seeing them as entities separate from her and what her real beliefs were. She started to see that it wasn't disrespectful to her mom, grandmother, or Aunt Mimi to forge a different path. They taught her the only thing they knew and that was understandable. She could honor their experiences without living out their beliefs. The house reveal. 
Toward the end of coaching together, Haley called me and said, oh my God, you are not going to believe this. Yesterday, my contractor called me and guess what? There are hardwoods under that shag carpet. I almost died laughing and I immediately thought, okay, I get it universe. There are hardwoods under that carpet, literally and proverbially. She took a beat and said, I hope my aunt Mimi knows what a gift she gave me. Not just the house, but this physical manifestation of the work I really needed to do. It was like, as I was ripping out that old house, I got to rip up the stuff that wasn't serving me anymore. And now I get to live in that house. Well, the bones of it anyway. But everything inside is new and me. Maybe that's the best of what it means to inherit things from your family, huh? The structure and support stay, but the inside gets to be all you. And maybe that's what it means to really be an independent woman. I wholeheartedly agreed. And somewhere, I think Mimi and Marlene are agreeing too. So now that you have a little bit of a sense of what happens in coaching, because Haley's story is such a perfect representation. That's why I loved it. Of what happens in the coaching process. Yeah. This is a good time to remind you that we are currently in one of our coaching enrollment periods. We only do these about three times three a year. times a year. And it doesn't mean you can't coach us any other time, but we specifically open up our calendars to be able to work with some people whenever we do these enrollments. And we're in one right now. So between now and next Tuesday, the 30th, a week from today, we, our enrollment window is open, which means if you are pretty seriously considering working with us in a one-on-one capacity, go to the episode description and we're going to have a link to where you can fill out a form to say, I want to talk to you. You're not committed. You're not putting out any money. You're just saying, I want to have a conversation to confirm or deny if my suspicion is right that I could really use some coaching. In that form, we have you select on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, how ready you are to actually start coaching. And so let me just like put this out there. If you say you're a five, we're normally like, you're not ready. If you say you're a five, maybe you need to join our waiting list. We do have a waiting list that's still, uh, we'll have a link to that as well, which means, yes, I want to do coaching and I'm serious about it, but I don't know if now is the right time. We recognize now may be the perfect time for some people and definitely not the perfect time for other people. All of our lives got turned upside down this year. So if now is not the right time. Join the wait list. We're looking for people who are looking to get started within... The next month. Yeah, four weeks, six weeks, something like that. Okay, so I kind of want to just lean on this analogy because it's the perfect one. Well, as we close out that, like, Haley never would have just painted over that gross-ass floral wallpaper in the 70s house. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't just, or like, I don't know, put like... A cover on the toilet and call it new. <laughs> I think that's what we try to do yeah. in life, right? Is we try to make changes without changing the fundamentals. We'll slap on a Band-Aid instead of doing surgery. Yes. Well, I was trying to use a house analogy, but that's well, fine. <laughs> that's fine too. <laughs> but yes, that's same, the same. point. And so this is why I get, I get very fired up about this. It's one of the things I care the most about. And when I'm talking to prospective coaches who are considering coach training... I tell them the number one most important thing that you need to be trained in as a coach and therefore that you need to care about if you're a client is can this person help you get to the root of what's really going on and help you change on that structural sort of internal level? Because until you change the inner stuff, the outer stuff doesn't change. So, Or not sustainably, at least. No, it'll change for like a month or two and then... The paint will start peeling right on back to where you were. And the mold will come back. (laughs) Uh And yeah, you just can't wipe away mold. You have to remediate that shit or else it's not going to go away. We try to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's what good coaching is all about. And that's why it works is because you you get a different result because you're a different person at the end of it. Yeah. And you don't have to figure out how to do all that stuff. Nobody knows how to do all the home improvement projects completely on their own. No, Without some support. Same is true in this context. Mm Mm-hmm. So you can also, if you don't want to go to the show notes, you can just go to clarityonfire.com. The work with us tab has the one-on-one coaching page drop down. You can go there and read about it, see your options, and then fill out that form to talk to one of us if you're serious about it. So we will be back on Friday with, I'm actually, this is not what I was intending, but it just came up. I wanted to have another burn this episode. We're going to talk about how we've got to 
chuck out or burn the garbage of labeling your emotions, period, as good or bad or anything in between. Emotions are value neutral, and we are going to rant about that for a little bit. (laughs) All right, we'll see you then.